Welcome to the Flux Public Dev Meeting uh, for June 22nd. Uh, we're just filling out the agenda right now. If anyone has anything to discuss, if you could please put it on the agenda doc, we've posted in the chat. Stefan, do you have an overview of the OCI things you want to discuss or should I just uh, create a, a, a summary based on your message in Slack? So I have finalized the RFC and my request is to get reviews from the maintainers. So we can all certainly help with that. Um, is there any specific order in which you want things to be looked at? For example, I noticed on the source controller PR that it's it's lacking many tests. So I assume that needs to be kind of addressed before it gets into main. Um, do you want the Flux2 PR to be prioritized? So the RFC no. to be? No, only the RFC. I mean, I created a proof of concept it took 12 hours. I wrote only on end to end tests to make sure things are um, working, but they don't, uh, as discovered a couple of minutes ago. So, yeah. Yeah. So, we need to, it's, we need to agree in the contract and we need to sign off on the contract that we can uh, fix all the, all the edge case issues in the uh, actual uh, PRs. But it means that uh, 2856 is that the, oh, no, that's the proof of concept implementation. Let me find the link of the RFC. Two six oh one. Okay. Oh, looks like GitHub container registry is down in that. Yeah, way. I just responded to someone on uh, Slack because I received some automatic ping also from Artifactory Hub that some other image wasn't available. So it's a transient issue. Yeah, GitHub partial page. Yeah, so kingdom that error is uh, it's uh, I don't know. probably related to that. So you can uh, Docker pull anything from GitHub container registries uh, resulting user cannot be authenticated with the token provided, even if all registry all the images are public. Oh. Well, that's exactly what I saw. Okay. Yeah, so they give a not uh, authentication error when in fact this has nothing to do with it. Just at a glance, I noticed another issue. I don't see any way through the CLI to manually reconcile OCI sources unless I'm just missing it. What? Can you say it again? Uh, looking for a flux reconcile command. Yes. Flux reconcile source of CI and the name of. Yeah. Oh, I have a mix of binaries here. That's my problem. Never mind. I'm sorry. Needed to run bin flux. Uh, 
Um, is there anything else you want to discuss? Yeah, so what I want to discuss is how can we release OCI for um, Kubernetes manifests as an MVP so people can try out the new workflows. I mean, um, the OCI proposal kind of changes how you think about Flux, GitOps and everything. Um, and we, I want to get feedback from people moving parts of the workflow into CI. And if that's acceptable, how is the user experience of that and so on. Um, the RFC has a bunch of things proposed there like cosign verification, um, auto login with OEDC for cloud providers, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was thinking of um, creating a minimum, minimal viable solution for OCI that only covers what we have for Helm OCI, as in authentication with uh, static credentials. Mm -hmm. From a image pool secret or a service account name that's it's the same stuff, right? You look at the service account, then you discover the same secret. Um, and release that to the public. Maybe we can add comments to the API spec with not implemented for all the other fields like the verification field and... Um, why no, introduce no. them if you are not implementing them yet? Why not? Well, because then you introduce something in your API that's kind of a promise, but you um, you are not making up to the promise yet, nor is anyone relying on it. So why introduce it? Yeah, I don't know for for um, validation and so on. I mean, if for the if it's for the sake of documentation, then the RFC should already cover for that. So then you can say like, well, it supports your implementation of whatever is proposed here or there. But kind of keeps it out of the out of the code until you have a specific reason to actually deal with it. Yeah. Okay. You can comment out everything. Yeah, mine it was minor detail, but I was just wondering. But you want to do like the, the 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 bare minimum first, and then you want to extend on that with with follow ups, and then kind of uh, do our proof of concepts or, or 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 release candidates of that, or how do you want to bring it all together? So, <clears throat> how I imagine things first, we um, decide if what's in the RFC is okay, merge that, mark it as implementable, implementable, yeah. Implementable. <laughs> implementable. <laughs> I've been working on this uh, OCI stuff for 18 hours and slept for hours, <laughs> so I'm yeah, like really dizzy. Um, okay, so get the RFC into shape, merge it, um, figure out what, like transform the proof of concept pull requests into MVP pull requests, um, implement basic auth, then release it as Flux 32. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. And uh, so there is a huge work that needs to be done to cover this RFC, which Sunny started in uh, image reflector controller. Basically, we have all the logic there for OIDC authentication and everything like that. 
that both Helm OCI and OCI artifacts uh, would benefit from it, like, you know, having all sorts of secrets uh, automatically login and all of that. And um, so that's kind of blocked on that work, right? We need to move. You mean the uh, the, the the registry login agent kind of uh, thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Sunny started a package, an internal package in image reflector controller. Of course, we cannot use that. So that needs to be finished with end to end tests and everything. I I see that some touch is also helping there. Uh, so after we have that package, the next step is to move that package into packages, into Flux CD package. So both source controller and image reflector controller can consume it. Then hook up the authentication for Helm OCI and uh, OCI artifact. Add those three container controller flags, auto login for EKS, uh, AWS, Google, and Azure. So that's one thing that should come after. Another one is cosine verification that we may also want to do for Helm charts as well. I mean, if all the things that source control does with OCI should apply to both implementations. Right. How hard, how hard is it this cosine verification to implement? Do you have any idea? So cosine has a package uh, in inside their project that their CLI consumes, but that package has everything imported in there, like all the cloud SDKs, all the all things, Kubernetes, everything. Half the internet is in there. Because like us, they have to deal with KMS, they have to deal with all the container registries, they have to deal with Kubernetes and so on. So I don't think it's hard to, to implement the verification. So the verification is already implemented by another CNCF project, which is called Kiverno. Kiverno has a cluster policy which can, which verifies um, container images based on a secret that you provide or um, um, a public CA. So we can look at Kiverno how they did it, uh, how they hook up uh, cosine and, and uh, follow, follow that or have that as a good example. Um, they have it integrated for some time now, some many months. Uh, what I think will run into issues is with, you know, Azure SDK, Google SDK, uh, Kubernetes client Go, and so on. That's where we need to, to see if we can, well, what are the, the issues there? Can we override everything with our own packages? Are there conflicts, whatever? And do we, do we want to support this natively? What about first step having a documentation that tells people how to do the verification with Kaverno once the source control pull an artifact? Would that be possible? Wait, our things are not container images. They don't run as in mm -hmm. pods. So oh, how, can, was, you, yeah. how can you use Kiverno? Is, so Kiverno is an admission controller mm -hmm. that looks at pods. Okay. We Makes don't sense. run our pods. OCI yeah. config don't. We, pods. Yeah. We, we download our own. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. So we need to have it. There is no way anything, any other project can do it for us. Um, there is also uh, Cosign has a project for uh, Git commit signing, 
that is taking off. I've seen a lot of people switching from OpenPGP to that. Um, so yeah, we should. It will be a great addition to source controller to be able to verify all things with cosine. Helm charts from OCI, OCI artifacts made by Flux CLI, uh, Git commits signed with cosine. Looking at cosine, it's not uh, too difficult. You just need to spit like SOPs and other implementations we have. It's just yeah. cutting off the top layer implementation layers, which swapping it for your own, and then figuring out how to inject all the things yourself, which is a control. Yeah. And it seems to be nicely written, as in better separated than SOPs, for example. So I don't think it will be much of a fight to make it dense how we like it dense. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very much like the SOPs integration. Um, yeah, so that's that's so. Verification is a is a big feature here that I don't think it should be part of the first release. Um, OEDC authentication is another one. And uh, we also need the CA uh, to support container registries with uh, self-signed certs. We have that into image reflector controller already implemented with, with the same library that I am using in, in source controller, which is Go Container Registry. That supports all things, uh, unlike uh, the one that Helm cho chose. So for the CA is more about, we don't want to copy paste code from image reflector controller to source controller. That, so we should get that um, into package as well. So we don't have similar code. That yeah, sounds good. So for the image reflector controller, I'm going to create a new issue there for extracting the CA part. And I don't know, with cosine, I'll create an issue in source controller for someone to look into it, not implemented yet, just figuring out, um, do an analysis, how Kiverno did it and so on. So we can uh, discuss it here when, when we actually look at it. Um, another topic around this is, so, Rashid from VMware is part of the Tanzu team. Um, wants to help us with with getting OCI there. Uh, Tanzu has its own um, uh, package format. So, like like my proof of concept where we do a flux build, flux push. Um, the Carvel project has a thing called image pack. Uh, we've tested the implementation I did in source controller with the container images that uh, image pack makes and that works with what we have today. And he is very keen on uh, contributing to getting the RFC implemented. So, for now, I have created an issue for him to help out with. Uh, it's about adding basic auth with static credentials, um, the Docker config file and the service account. And after that, we have to figure out, um, create more issues for him to help us out. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. Um, the team wants to contribute to this, so we should make sure uh, we have, you know, well scoped issues, so they can create uh, 
small pull requests that we can merge into the OCI branch. Awesome. So here there maybe you should, I don't know, create an issue around adding tests and how you see what exactly do we need to test. I've seen that for some source types, we look at the final artifact and check that all files are there as they supposed to be. So I'm guessing that's one of the tests that should definitely be into the, for the OCI repository. Um, we tend to try to assure everything is in an end, in an expected end state as it should be, uh, depending on whatever external factors come into play. So for each uh, uh, failure variation that the controller sees is a different thing, we try to add a test case for if the controller is expected to produce an artifact or if certain conditions influence how it produces the artifact, then we have a variety of test cases for that. So it's simple test coverage, basically. Just, I will create an issue and uh, kind of highlight the outline of what, what we tend to check on. But basically it's, it's the conditions, the status, uh, advertised status information, and uh, the produced results of the artifact itself. Yeah, I've looked at the Git tests and mm -hmm. there are like, tons of tests that I don't see how they would fit in here. Uh, I guess the OCI thing is more closer to the bucket implementation. No, I think it's even much simpler. It's even simpler, exactly, because it's one layer. It's that more like a, it's like a helm chart, but without making modifications i would say yeah, so yeah. it's simply pulling based on the ref and you kind of need to find that ref in a pool um, but once you have that specific thing then it's then you're done and it's not like the the helm chart that has like a dozen of options that can uh, do lost lost modifications so that you have to check all the kind of where things that can happen and with git it's like uh, all the different ref type sources create like a shit ton of things you have to take into account but this is much simpler indeed yeah also here we have three types of refs one is a tag one is a digest but in the end is like uh, checking out the commit in both cases and the third one is sandware so for sandware i think we should have the same tests again as for hand charts because it's the same thing right um, instead of having a fixed version, you give it a sample. So we need to figure out, we do correct ordering and all of that. I think we should reuse the same card. But for, for when we have a sample, we should reuse the same card to, to, to find what is the, the newest pack for the semantic version, the one that we already have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's exactly the same thing as for for hand charts from OCI, uh, except for the digest, right? You cannot refer um, a chart based on yeah, ex except for the digest. Yeah. yeah. But we should definitely have uh, tests that cover the consistency of our artifact. Uh, I mean, for how I've implemented the, the flux build and flux push in the CLI is, is the same code that source controller uses for creating the flux artifact. So what we are pushing to the container registry is the same thing that we host inside source controller. Um, is the same code as, as he wrote, uh, except for the checksum and, and other things that uh, OCI 
does its own. I mean, when you wrap it in a, when you wrap the tar in a, in in the OCI artifact, the digest and everything is calculated by the library by Go Container Registry. So when we build the artifact uh, and we download it in source controller, is basically the same thing. But um, source controller should work with artifacts made by other tools, right? So we definitely need tests that whatever we get from OCI, it's inside our internal artifact as well. So I've seen that there are some tests around files. They looked very complicated to me. I didn't figure out how to adapt them, but... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also a bit of the source, like the, the source controller now, how we work with clients, etc. It's really nice, but as soon as you get into how we persist things to the storage, uh, it suddenly is uh, a lot less nice. And that's because the storage thing is like, I think that's the only thing that hasn't been touched mm. kind of uh, since all the refactoring we did. I kind of have a desire to make it to rewrite it in such a way that it also can be used like a cache client by uh, controllers that actually download artifacts. But that's for the to-do list. Yeah, so I'm guessing we need something like this. Or OCI, there's one I looked at it where you assert paths from the source and you compare them to actual files that end up in our storage. So, uh, the problem is that, yeah, we need, we don't have a test server on our own. We are using the Docker distribution inside tests. So we need to figure out how to, write a similar test, but instead of having a Git server, we use the, um, whatever we use for Helm, I'm guessing is, uh, is the Docker distribution, right, Sule? It's the Docker distribution, yeah. Yeah. Do we have, I'm guessing we don't. We have everything in soft control. You can extract this if you want to have a test package, I guess. And then we can spin up the other distribution registry every time we want to use it for a test. Yes. So yeah, we need to compile a list of requirements for the MVP in terms of testing. What needs to be covered before we can merge the OCI branch. Okay. Should we move on to the next agenda item? Yep. Uh, I guess we're going from the bottom to the top. Uh, so I'm on feedback on uh, flux troubleshooting ch cheat sheet PR. That PR is from Daniel, who's not here today. Uh, just having a look at it real quick. Is for the GA roadmap an issue? I'm not sure what feedback or from who uh, is expected here. Does anyone have more clue than I do about this one? Or should no. we go on to the next one? Okay, uh, then we're on to the 
uh, agenda items that we have every week, which are standing. Um, round of what's happening on the way to GA, which we've already been over OCI at least. Uh, is there anything else we should talk about? Then I'm still working on refactoring the home controller. Um, I'm laying a hand on the, the last tests on running separate uh, individual Helm actions and making sure that they um, record the right status on the uh, and conditions on the um, actual Helm release object. Uh, once that's done, I am going to do some tidying of the code and then move up one layer and actually uh, wire it into the reconciler because this separate reconciling element only takes part of reconciling the actual release, but it's outside of the controller's reconciler. Um, more on that next meeting, I guess. Okay. Um, I guess I was curious about the uh, possibility of drift detection for Helm. Is that, that's one I've come across in the issue queue recently. Is that likely to land soon or? Possibly? There is a code path which basically says that it needs to be implemented. Uh, it's just not implemented yet because my focus at present is to bring it up with uh, current controller capabilities first and then figure out um, the details of uh, well, new features. Um, but it's taken into account, like all the code around is prepared to actually do it. So it will eventually um, land. Uh, the idea is that it will be opt-in in the beginning at least, because I'm not sure um, well, how reliable three-way um, merge results are in combination with how specifically. Um, so it will probably be a spec drift enable kind of boolean. And then uh, I've been thinking about how the actual drift correction would work. Uh, because one, one way to solve it is saying like, well, we do a new release and then uh, Helm performs an upgrade and then it reapplies the resources. But what you then, uh, what can then happen is that if a user does um, repetitive changes because the controller is fighting the user's changes, um, is that at a certain point, it will, for example, have done five upgrades while the max history is set to five. So then you lose your previous release object. So the alternative of that would be to basically uh, apply the resources for which we have detected drift or something, something outside of how Helm deals with things. So it's that same issue of spanning the release history that is the main concern, I guess. Uh, if we can do it without that, then it would be ideal. Or if we could get a release only when there's actually a drift that's corrected. Um, and then, uh, then, of course, we have to deal with the fallout of jobs, which is why it would have to be opt-in, I guess, because uh, jobs could be unpredictable and that maybe you might have bad results for some Helm charts and not for others. Mm. Uh, by jobs, I guess I mean life cycle hooks. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. It depends on a whole lot of things. Like uh, Drift can be like, hey, a user completely deleted all the resources that belong to this Helm release object, but the Helm release object itself is still there, so the Helm storage item. Um, then the action you want to take is probably going to be much more advanced because you probably need to do an upgrade in, in cases of like, uh, I don't know, something that's kind of stateful uh, to indeed run jobs, etc. But if you're, someone changes a, a replica count in a deployment, then you probably want to do an apply. And this is basically where the controller needs a human to either say like, hey, I always want to do this or, or I always want to do that because I don't see how we can uh, provide the user with, with, with an API that gives such fine grain instructions. That makes sense. The Helm controller API is already a bit, you have to read the instructions. So um, I don't see that as an obstacle. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, 
Okay. So um, we can look at the maintainers focus board or um, if there's anything else to put on the agenda before that. I have a, just a, a quick thing. Sure. Uh, so I've been looking at um, fixing the, or upgrading the Azure end-to-end -end tests uh, and at the same time, just moving all Azure dependencies to the latest GA SDK, which annoyingly enough requires 1.18 because I don't think it's using generics yet, but it, it says that like they might use generics. It is using generics. It is using generics? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's using kernel generics in the uh, identity libraries. Oh, okay. Yeah, I must have missed that. Um, yeah, so we're kind of... I know that some... The Flux repo has updated to 1.18. The Flux is like the actual one that collects everything. But the other individual controllers are running 1.17. That's correct. Yeah. Um, that it's like, I, I feel like um, doing, it's going to feel like I'm going to end up doing the work twice because there are changes between the current SDK that's being used and the, the GA version of the SDK. So I, I feel like we need to update the, the, we need to make sure that we're running one at 18 before we can update the end-to-end -end test because otherwise we end up having to fix it twice. Uh, yeah, we need to address it anyway because um... One of my PRs against the SOPS um, repository was merged and it's in their develop branch. And that basically moves to the GA library for uh, uh, yeah. Azure uh, KMS, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the key vault, yeah. 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 Um, uh, it's just like the PRs are welcome. I just know that probably for half of the repositories, you're going to attempt to that. Uh, you're going to run into so, some sort of issue you need to solve. Uh, yeah. And that's why others probably also haven't done it yet. No, I, I get, I, I understand that it's probably, there's probably something that I don't understand yet that I will probably find. Um, do we know, do, are we aware of anything like right now that's in a conflict by, a, by bumping to 1.18? No, I just think, I just think for like the, um, for the source controllers, you have to of the the the, the libc2 dependencies, of yeah. course. Uh, but that that repository was updated, um, and I'm not sure if there was a PR already that tried to update to one eighteen. I saw. I think somebody. I keep forgetting who it was. I think there was a I PR that was Paolo. actually merged. But that might have been in the PG, PKG repo. Yeah, that's the other thing that is, of course, because the uh, PKG package is like the the most top level package. It's probably best to do the other updates there first. Yeah. Um, don't, don't know how easy that is. Yeah, I yeah. So that I need to start working on that before I can get the Azure stuff because I want to update the end to end test to use uh, the new. Uh, web identity tokens also to verify that that works. Oh, is that the area also where Terraform comes into play? Because I also know that Terraform has some dependency that has a breaking change, and I think it's pretty easy to solve. But um... the, I, I probably there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of an, things. I found an issue for it somewhere. I think it's on 1.15 and uh, 1.16 is available or it's on 1.16. Yeah. Yeah, but I've been fighting this up with the uh, Thanos project right now, getting them to update and this affects and then also in that case, Loki, which is like super fun. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of fresh in my head right now. So that's why I'm like, yeah, let's just get this done here also. Philip, here is the issue around Terraform exec. Um, <clears throat> you may also want to get in touch with Sunny because he created a, a whole yeah. suite of Terraform tests for image reflector controller for all the clouds, not only Azure. 
Yeah. And we should definitely extend or rewrite the one that we have in Flux 2 with the TF env test that he created. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are the other issue right now with the, the new authentication is that it has a limited support right now. Um, so we're waiting on some features from Microsoft. Um, so it's like, I, I have to look over what, like how much we should rewrite the test currently if we still end up having to use, or we can't write the test for certain things because there are features missing. So it's, um, but we'll, I'll, I'll have a look. <laughs> Yeah, also on, on source control. So right now I have to, what I'm doing, I have some make file that is deleting test files from source control so I can work on it um, locally. I have go 118 and a bunch of tests are failing, um, expired or I don't know certificates that are no longer valid for libgit2. Also the um, git tests, the git repository tests are failing in various ways uh, with go 118. So yeah, I'm not sure it's that easy to upgrade uh, or maybe it is and I haven't figured out what's wrong with it. It's probably gonna be one of those oh, this is going to be simple. And then it becomes a yak shaving experiment of attempting to fix Azure and then ending up having to fix everything with 1 to 18. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be fun. OK. Well, I have good news about GitHub container registry, it's no longer experiencing that issue. And the thing I tested uh, is working now for OCI. So if everyone could test uh, OCI, that'd be great. Uh, we're near the end of the hour. Should we close the meeting or? Does anyone have anything else to talk about? No, I don't think so. Super. Yep. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye.